so they can't take it. They can't do it. Also, like the ones that, that are done at the Byzantine Church. Have you ever been there? I have not, but I had a mass for my husband said there. I, I need they to go. Put, they put the Eucharist, which looks like a crouton, in a, I'm going to get these terms wrong, in a chalice of wine. And then they stick a spoon in the wine. I'm sure it's not called a spoon or a chalice, but they stick a spoon <laughs> in the in the wine, get a crouton on it. I'm sure it's not it's the host. And they sling it into your mouth. So you get the, U the Eucharist and the wine at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you're also holding, again, not going to get the proper term, um, some kind of, it looks like velvet. It, go, it stretches from... Uh, under your chin, out, uh, out out of ways, so that nothing is spilled. It lands, it lands on this thing. It's, it's like a giant bib. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's somebody yeah. Byzantine in this right now, about to pass out because I just <laughs> a and a bib, you know, and a crouton and a wine. Oh, right, exactly. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I did have that in Mexico, where the 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 Eucharist was dipped in the wine, but then put in my mouth, something was underneath me. It was very bizarre. It was the first time I've experienced that, but um, yeah, I'm going to have to go look up all that stuff that you just said. And you're so funny. Cause I bet you there are people going, what? What is he saying? <laughs> How dare he? Doesn't he know our church? No. Yeah, yeah. So there are 21 or 22 rites in the Catholic church, right. which are legit. Right. So Right, and then they're all beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the only one I don't like, and, and I'll explain why I don't like it, I don't like the Novus Ordo. And let mm -hmm. me explain why. Because at the Latin Rite Church, I've never seen someone sitting on the back pew, eating a pizza, drinking soda, chewing gum, listening to their headphones, to music that shouldn't be played in church, and then they go up front to get the host that they're going to get in their hands while they're listening to their Walkman and chewing gum and drinking soda. And they come back to their pew and drink soda to swallow the host. I have never seen anybody in the Norvis Ordo right drinking. I've seen a, a girl like out in the narthex with headsets on. This was just this Friday for veneration of the cross. Her parents must have made her come. Her parents went in. She was sitting outside. Um, I've never seen anyone eating or drinking in even the back pew. <laughs> That's bizarre. I've seen that. I have seen that. I have been to churches all over the world. Now, I will say I've never seen that in a church outside the United States. Hmm. But I will say I've seen that behavior in at least 20 churches in the United States. I was in a church in Tallahassee, Florida. We were on tour and we looked up a Latin church, Latin Rite, and we found one. When we got there, it clearly was not a Latin Rite church. It, it looked do Novus Ordinary. And it was a round church. It wasn't uh, traditional. We walked inside like there was room for about 3,000 people. It was theater setting, seating. And so we sit down, we're like the only people there. It was about 20 minutes before church starts. And suddenly the church fills up. 3,000 people are there. And there's all these announcements being made. And then the mass starts. And I had two assistants with me. And I leaned over and I said, tell me the truth. Did you guys take me to a Baptist church service and you lied to me and you're playing a joke on me? And they're like, no, this, this is Catholic. I'm like, no, it's not. None of the prayers they said were valid. When they got to the consecration, the consecration prayers were not valid. And I said, I'll bet everybody gets up and goes up there. And they asked, what about us? I said, I'm not good enough. It's not a valid host. So when it was time to go up, everybody, 3,000 people got up and went up there. And one of my assistants was like, 
there's no way all these people are in a state of grace. They couldn't, all of them couldn't be in a state of grace. So it doesn't really matter if they're in a state of grace. It's not a valid host anyway. Right. So we, we didn't take it. And then uh, when before we left, the priest was announcing that if you leave through the main door that, that is up the main aisle of the church, that's the red balloon door. But if you leave through the right door, then it's the purple balloon door. And my assistants were like, what the? And I said, <laughs> well, take me through the right balloon door. I want the purple balloon. And they're like, why? I said, you'll see when I get it. So, and this would have been like 2015, 16, something like that. So we go out the purple balloon door where they give us the purple balloon on a string. And the priest smiles at me and we go out front. And I said, let's go to the sign. Take me to the sign. So we get to the sign. I kneel down by the sign where it has the name of the church. And I hold the, the purple balloon by my face. And I said, take a picture of that. They do. And I said, okay, now send that to Michael Boris and say that I went through the purple balloon door. Because <laughs> he gets upset by things like that. Do you remember the name of that church that you can share? No. It was a Nova Soto church in Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, look it up online. Um, it was in a neighborhood. It didn't look like there would be a church there. But, I mean, the neighbor, there's houses everywhere. And then there's this church in the middle of everything. And I think it was round and it had theater seating. And like I said, it looked like it held about 3,000 people. And um, I, I couldn't believe that. I mean, it was like a Protestant service. And, and it was a Protestant service because the host wasn't valid. Right. Wow. Wow. Infiltration probably there. <clears throat> Um, what what can you what can you say? Because I'm sorry, go ahead. The priest didn't seem evil. He just seemed like he didn't know. Like this was how he decided to do the prayers. Yeah. yeah. It didn't seem like he was misleading people on purpose, that he was just this is how we're doing things today. And in some cases, that's their job, not to make themselves look evil, like they're trying to deceive people, you know. Um, so I look at America. We're so messed up here. I mean, I don't know about you, but <laughs> since 2020 came around, and I know you've, you struggle with sight issues, but I found scales come right off my eyes. I used to be so sillily believing in if you had a white lab coat, sure, you knew what you were talking about. If you were a politician, <laughs> right? if you were a politician, you definitely know. If you were in a suit, if you were a celebrity, I mean, I was such a loser back in the day. Like in twenty before twenty thirteen, before you pulled me out of pizza hell. Say that again. That's how we're trained to think. Exactly. And I mean, before before God, though, I was that dumb dumb who didn't know anything about politics, watched E! Entertainment television until my eyes crossed. You know, I was high every day. I just was living this numb and dumb life. You're right. Yeah, I was trained to be a slave in corporate America, even though I climbed up to the executive ranks. But now we are We're trained. trained. And... We're trained that if somebody, if you want to know if something is not real, listen to who the Democrats say is fake news. Because whoever they say is fake news is real. So I now you've got some people who are Democrats. I'm just going to jump in. I'm not going to say the devil's advocate because I hate that phrase. I'm just going to be a Democrat, which maybe is a devil's advocate. Just kidding. I'm going to be a person who has been a lifelong Democrat who looks and I'm a practicing Catholic and I love my family and I love Jesus and I believe in the church, but I'm a Democrat. So what do you say 
to someone like that. Did you know that every Democratic candidate that is pro-death and believes in pro-choice, when they die, they are responsible on Judgment Day for every baby they are responsible for murdering. Which means, remember what we talked about earlier about this woman bought me blessed, bought me miraculous medals that I could get blessed and give out because everybody that gets, that receives Jesus and becomes Catholic because of this blessed miraculous medal, she gets partial credit for. Right. That works right. in reverse as well. If you voted for a Democratic candidate and they're responsible for 80 million dead babies dying, you put them in the office, you're partially responsible for those 80 million dead babies. You better go to confession and you better make it serious. You better seriously confess yourself. That's a lot of time in purgatory and that's a lot of forgiveness you need to get because it wasn't just one candidate that believes that. It's all the Democratic candidates that are on the pro-death platform and God is not pro-death. There's a verse in the Bible that says it lists a group of people that will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's in Galatians. And one of, this is in my book. If you read uh, the list of people, one of the things that will not inherit the kingdom of God is sorcery. But when that was written, the original word wasn't sorcery. It wasn't magic. It was pharmakeia. And pharmakeia was a potion that women would drink to induce an abortion. So it says in that verse that if you're good at getting an abortion, if you've gotten one or if you give them, that you don't inherit the kingdom of God. That verse, again, doesn't end with, but once saved, always saved. You might want to rethink your life. You might, you know, it, choose the candidate that's the best candidate. You know, don't go with the one that's pro-death that's taking you to hell. You know, you can't get to, this is why my ministry is not liked. My ministry is not liked because I bring you the truth and then I make you change. Mm -hmm. No one wants to be told what they're doing is wrong. And no one wants to be told they have to start doing something new. And I tell you both. Right. right. And thank you for that. Because we need yeah. more people that do speak the truth and tell you, good luck getting into purgatory, let alone into heaven with some of the ways that we think and what we believe. And I think a lot of people are too fearful of the judgment of others. And I, I believe you and I are far beyond that, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we are living for Jesus and he's our audience of one. And that's all I care about. And I've spoken out a lot against the culture and p politicians and celebrities. And, you know, that's what I'd like you to kind of dive into a tiny bit. And we are definitely at the two hour mark. So we can go on a little bit more if you're cool with that. Sure. You know, okay. when I'm telling this story and I'm telling all the stuff I know, I don't get tired. Okay, you know, cool. When I'm, doing, when I'm doing a Q, I've had a QA and a go eight hours, you know, oh, I'm, after a conference. You know, I don't, I don't get tired. Now, when I'm done, I'm done. Yeah. But, you know, prior to that, God gives me the grace to keep going. All right, so, cool. One of my jobs as a high wizard was called a warehouse deal. And a warehouse deal is that I am going to make people rock stars. Now, being a rock star is not exactly all that it's cracked up to be. You know, you don't get to be a multi-billionaire and spend it all. You're, you're told how much you can spend. You're told what you can do. You are told everything. You're even told what you can wear. You know, I don't know if you remember when Avril Lavigne came out. She wore a particular pair of pants and shirt all the time. She didn't do that because she wanted to. She was told she had to. You know, uh, 
you know, uh, their handlers, if you will. Justin, yeah, Justin Bieber had a certain haircut, and he kept that haircut. It wasn't because it made him look particularly good. It's because the Illuminati told him he had to have it. The Illuminati. Oh, you conspiracy theorist, you. <laughs> you know, a lot of conspiracy theories are conspiracy facts. Amen, brother. You know, did you see The Sound of Freedom? I did. Because that guy, uh, what's his real name? Jim Caviezel. Oh, no. The uh, uh, the guy the who played him is Jim Caviezel, but I can't remember his name. I can't either. But he confirms that Adrenochrome is real. Yeah. He was in that movie, was actually shot prior to 2020. And he appeared in the, the um, Health Freedom Summit around 2020, but you know that there was the, the pandemic happened and all of that. I was in the Health Freedom Summit around, I think it was the next year after Jim Caviezel was in it. And you know who the biggest advertiser of the Health Freedom Summit that I was in was? You'll, you'll never guess. Who advertised Health Freedom Summit more than anyone with one statement. All right, Joe repeat Biden. that. I was talking over you. So go, who's the number one? And then go from there. Who's the number one advertiser for the Health Freedom Summit? I don't know. It was, it was Joe Biden. Because Joe Biden came out after Jim Caviezel did his talks and said that the greatest source of misinformation and fake news is the Health Freedom Summit. And so we kept playing that as an advertisement, Joe Biden saying it. Okay. And we ended up with all the Trump people coming. We had over 100,000 people at the conference. It was a wonderful conference. If you look mine up, I spoke with also, I think Father Dave Nix was also one of the speakers. There was a bunch of speakers. I mean, there was like probably about 30 of us total. And there was a lot of stuff on COVID and, um, you know, the pandemic and all of that. And a lot of doctors and nurses that came out and spoke. And, and obviously, I think it was probably banned in a lot of places. But, and if you attended the conference live, it was free. But, and, and it was like on Zoom. But if you went there and decided you wanted to buy it, then it cost money to, but then I mean, you could see it once you owned it, you could see it anytime you wanted. And um, it, it was a really good conference. But yeah, it was nice of Joe Biden to advertise for us. <laughs> You're um, right. Everything that they say is fake is real. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much anything that comes out of the mainstream news. And I feel so bad because Fox is one of them. You know, I mean, right. they all have the agenda. So you've got to find some alternative places to get your information and rumble's a great place i mean pretty soon i'm gonna have to start moving my stuff over i have a channel over there but i have a feeling it's gonna get pretty bad here on youtube the closer we get to the election anyway you were talking about the warehouse deal too right i don't want right. you to so in a warehouse deal i show up full-on high wizard gear you know, so I'm, explain, explain the wizard gear, top hat, uh, old tuxedo, and you have like a skull you know, face. Corpse paint on the face. Uh, if you go to Pink Like a Pill official video, she has a high wizard in her video four times. The last two times he's doing a spell. Uh, there's also a picture of Pink on the red carpet standing next to a high wizard, and they've got their arms around each other. So apparently somebody she actually knows. And um, so yeah, that's the look. I had an 18th century tuxedo. Uh, I wore Harley Davidson slouch boots with it. I had an old school uh, tuxedo um, top hat. I carried a cane because I thought that added a touch of class. I thought the wand was kind of funky. And um, I show up with an entourage. My entourage 
Uh, at that time, they wore they used clipboards. Now I imagine that's a, a tablet or, or a laptop or something like that. But back then, we weren't all that tech friendly. You know, I started this in 1987. I ended in 99. Um, we do a warehouse deal anywhere from every three to every six months. Now, these people have been told by maybe their handler, their director, their producer, their agent, a friend, another rock star, about if you want to be famous, you got to go to one of these deals. And we have two different places that we go. One's in Hollywood. One's in Los Angeles, and it's in the warehouse district, and I go. And like I said, I've got an entourage with me, and we enter usually through a back door. This room, it's a huge warehouse. Sometimes there's stalls in it, and some people go, and it's just them. And sometimes they go, and it's the whole band. And sometimes they set up their equipment, all their instruments, and they think that I want them to play for me or something. I don't, I don't care what you sound like. I don't even care if you can sing. I go and I ask them, who wants to be famous? Everybody raises their hand. Well, if they didn't want to be famous, they wouldn't be here. But what are you willing to do to be famous? Now, that's, that's the kicker right there. What are you willing to do to be famous? So if I was asking you, what would you be willing to do to be famous? What would you do? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, back in the day, I don't know, but I think you're, I think where you're going, I uh, wouldn't do anything with animals or kids. Uh, I've heard this little piece. So that, that would be my borderline, right. but pretty much anything else I would. Right. So you drew the line in the sand. That's not who Satan's interested in. Yeah. He wants the person that's willing to jump in the mud and be drugged through it. So I keep going and we take your name off the list. We put a little check mark by it and put in and tell you to come back in three months. We'll try again. And we leave you there. And we keep going through people. You know, and most people are like, nothing with animals or children, nothing with animals, nothing with children. And all those people's names are being taken off the list. And they're being told, come back in three months. Eventually I come up to somebody though and they say, I'll do anything. Well, give me an example of anything. Everybody in here said every anything, but notice no one's on the list yet. And he said, if you put me in a room with a horse and a three-year-old girl, I'm going to have sex with at least one of them. Probably both. I'll do the whatever extreme you want me to do. You're our boy. I hand in what's called a tier two card. In a tier two card, it's a white card with a black phone number on it. I said, you call that number, meet them, do whatever they say to do. I'll see you on MTV and within six months. So this guy I went up to, he admitted he cannot sing. He cannot dance. He cannot write songs. He cannot write lyrics. He can't write music. He can't even write poetry. There was a book that's been there. It's been there multiple times that I've been there. It's a Dr. Seuss book. I imagine somebody at some time was there with a child, and the child left the book there. And I said, read me this. So he starts to read me this Dr. Seuss book. And just before it rhymes, he closes the book and hands it back to me and says, I don't get it. <laughs> you can't even make a Dr. Seuss book rhyme. I'm like, wow, you're pretty much worthless. But... He said he would have sex with a horse and a child. So I gave him the card. You do whatever they say to do. I said, now I will tell you from what I've been told, you're going to go into a room and you're going to be given options of things to do. I don't know how many options you get, but you'll be given options. And then what you do is going to be filmed and they're going to take still photos of it. And if you're okay with that, I will see you on MTV in six months. So he went off to do whatever it is he did. And about 90 days later, I saw him on MTV singing and dancing 
two things he swore he couldn't do in one of the most popular boy bands of the 1990s. Now, which band? In sync. Which guy? Can't tell you. My attorney says I could be liable for a lawsuit. Okay. I can claim, I can claim the band because there's multiple members. I can't okay. tell you exactly. Who. No, you so, can't blame me for asking, right? I was told by two different rock stars what happens when you go to these places. There's two different places you can go to. One is a warehouse, and it looks ratty and unsafe. And one of them is a hotel. The hotel is in Los Angeles, and it's just an average-looking tall hotel, but no one ever rents a room there. People show up all the time, and they go inside, and they leave after some time, but they're not renting rooms there. They're going there to fulfill whatever their contract is. So the person that I befriended said, he parked his car there and went inside. He'd been told this was the address he had to go to, and he'd been told you're going to have to do something you're most likely not going to want to do. But if you want to be a rock star, you're willing to do it. So he went in, and you go up to the front desk. You give them your ID. They make a copy of it, and they write down some information about you. And then they have you sit down in the lobby. They wait a few minutes, and then they get a call. They tell you to come up. They give you a key, tell you to go up to a certain floor, and this is your key to get in the room. So he went up and opens the door. When you open the door, there's a white diamond table right in front of you, and it has a big glass cup, basically, in front of you. And that big cup has a bunch of white envelopes that are sealed. And there's instructions on the table. It tells you to choose an envelope, open it, take out the card and read it, and then turn around because there's a camera above the door and you hold up what it says so they can see it on the camera. Then you decide if you're going to do that or if you're gonna put your hand back in there and choose something else. And what you choose might be better or worse than what you chose the first time. And then you hold that one up and you decide which one you're gonna do. And whichever one you decide on, you put it in your back pocket uh, if there's also a, a corresponding letter on the card that corresponds with a letter on one of the doors in this room. So if you choose A, then you go into room A. If you choose B, you go into room B. And you go in there and you do whatever it is that it's telling you to do. And one of the rock stars told me that in one of the rooms was a bunch of cats and dogs and you had to choose to either have sex with like a minimum of three of those, or you were taken to this other room and there was children and you had to have sex with at least three of the children. He didn't say what he did, but he said that when he rode the elevator back down, he was rethinking his life. When he got down, he had to give the card that he had done to the front desk and they told him that he would receive a phone call within seven days giving him a contract and a deal and within seven days he did get that phone call and he signed a deal and he was famous this happened in the 90s he made world fame back then and he's still well known he's still famous i don't know if he's still performing but he's still famous. And the other person I talked to, you go to a dingy warehouse, you go in that door, it's the same type thing, but the table is made out of wood and it looks like it was just planks hammered together and you're given instructions on what to do. And then you choose what, what room you're gonna go to and the warehouse is filled with rooms and you choose the card 
you hold it up, then you choose another card if you want to do that, and you go into one of these rooms and you do whatever it is that you were told to do. And in one of the rooms, he picked up, you had to eat an entire bowl of feces. I don't know what the other option was, and I don't know what he chose. But you it know, did not. I've heard that like the elite have to do that when they're worshiping Satan or whatever, and they, you know, it's disgusting. They have to drink urine and eat poop in front of each right. other, like it's an hors d'oeuvre or something like that. Right. Now, it, this, I can't imagine. Now, if you decide at this point that you changed your mind, you don't want to be a rock star that bad. Then you leave, but now your name is taken off the list for three years. So you can rethink your life for three years. And you can watch all the people that hit mega rock star status that you wish could be you, but you chose not to eat the bowl of dog food. Mm -hmm. And you know you're rethinking your life for three years, thinking, should I have eaten the bowl of dog food? Or am I happier now? And a lot of people go back and agree that they'll do whatever it is they're told to do. They don't care what it is. They're willing to do that because they've seen Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, Eminem, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Bruce Springsteen. You know, everybody is making millions of dollars and they're not. You know, Jay-Z worth a over a billion dollars, you know, Madonna worth billions of dollars, you know, and this could be them and it's not them. You know, they chose not to eat the dog poop and now they're making $300 a week. So it's, is it a vast majority of famous musicians, rock stars, whatever you want to call them? Uh, I mean, it can't be everybody, right? I mean, same, same with, politicians same with actors and actresses and celebrities and sports people i mean i have to imagine that there's a lot of people that would do things for that fame and and fortune and from what i know i don't know what the deal is that athletes have to do but i don't know that they have to do that i don't know how many athletes would actually do that um and a lot of athletes believe themselves to be Christian. And I can't imagine any of them would do satanic deals like that. Although, you know, the quarterback for Kansas City Chiefs is dating a witch. Well, so was Tom Brady. Or married to one. Married Giselle to one. Um, you know, um, I mean, I don't know if she's a witch, but she was saying we have to pray certain things. I mean, Tom Brady said it on an interview. I don't know. Um, actors, I'm not sure what the deal is they have to do, but I know I got to party with a lot of actors and a lot. I made 1,200 rock stars. Now, some of the rock stars were a one-hit wonder. You know, some of them became, you know, they're still famous now. You know, there are a lot of names that you would all know, but, you know, not everybody becomes a quote unquote rock star. So what do you mean when you say you made 1200 rock stars? What does that mean? I, I gave them the card, signed with the Illuminati. Oh. They're a rock star now. Okay. If you Got didn't it. go through us, it's very rare that somebody made it on their own. I mean, extremely rare. When, when I would tour, and when I say tour, they know for 90 days in advance where I'm gonna be. They plan my, 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 my every day. As a high wizard, you're traveling the world, sometimes just the United States, sometimes just one state, but you're going all over that area for 90 days. And you have to do magic spells. The coven is paid big money for you to do spells. You don't see that money. You see gifts, maybe. You know, you might be given something because you did this, but you're not paid for it. So it's a free job. I get to drive a Lamborghini Diablo, but I don't get to own it. 
I get to live in a mansion in Calabasas, but I don't own it. I get to wear a nice high wizard costume, but I don't own it. You know, I, I get, I, I'm, I'm driving a Bugatti. It's a nice car. I don't own it. You know, I get to party with rock stars. They don't really know who I am because my, my face is painted. If I showed up at their house without my costume on, they'd kick me out. They wouldn't know who I was. So, you know, it, Satan's all about using your illusion. You know, you, you don't have anything. Satan makes you think you do. You know, and you know you don't. As the high wizard, you know what your real car is. You know where your real house is. You know the real money you don't have and what you do have. You know that $87 million is not yours. And you know you can't touch it. What you have is $235. And you know you can't even touch that. You know, you have to tell them, I have to pay these bills this month. Okay, you can spend it on those. But, you know, you want to spend it on something frivolous, you're going to have to get permission for that. You know, however many times I go to the theater, I got to get permission to go. Okay, but then you're like, what, 90 percentile accurate with your spells. What kind of spells are you doing and who are you doing those spells for? Because that's what you have. I mean, technically, that's what Satan gave you right. outside of all the other stuff, right? Um, we do a lot of spells for the elite. I did a spell for a billionaire that the rumor is he paid between $500 million and $1 billion. This would have been in the late 80s. And what he asked for, I never thought would come true. I thought, this is so far-fetched, and this is so far out there, that, that there's no way this is going to come true. But, you know, you paid this kind of money. You paid money for my My philosophy was, I was told I could turn down anybody for a spell. Anybody I wanted to, I could turn down. Now, there would be another wizard waiting in the wings that says, yes, I'll do it. But I can turn anybody down. I don't have to do any spells. But I'm a high wizard. That's my job. My philosophy was, if you paid money, you deserve your spell. So this guy paid this much money, between $500 million and a billion dollars, so that all the future TV shows and movies, cartoons series, everything, would have homosexual characters. Well, being gay back in the 80s was not in vogue. If you wanted to die, tell people you're gay. See what happens to you then. You'll find you'll be drugged behind a truck and murdered. And there won't even be people looking for your killers. Like, oh, he's gay and he died. Oh, well. You know, it was not a popular thing to say you were gay back then. You know, there was even, my, my college campus had um, the Gay Student Union. We had one. And these people showed up in, in the dark. And people would come out there and take their license plates down. And they were scared to show up. They would park away from the, away from the, where they were meeting and sneak there. Because they were scared of being beaten up or murdered. And this was on a college campus. So I am um, I agree to do the spell. And I did a spell so that all the future TV shows and movies would have a gay character in them. Name a show that doesn't have a gay character now. All right. I was going to say, it took a little while for that spell to come through, but... And I recall hearing it was like three of the network, top network people on a previous interview. So was it three, like the ABC, NBC, CBS, or was it one billionaire guy? It was one billionaire guy. Okay. So what other, I mean, like, can you give me another example? <laughs> we, did, um, we did spells. Now, a lot of the spells we do are blood sacrifices. So a hex comes with a blood sacrifice. And we do an abortion. It's an assisted abortion. My job is to get blood on my hands and do the hex. So I'm doing a magic spell with this. I've got blood on my hands. And they, they murder a baby. And it's an abortion doctor that's there. 
the abortion nurse, sometimes we're at a facility, and sometimes not. Sometimes we've been in farmhouses, private houses, pediatrician's office, um, and an actual abortion mill. And, you know, the... the like Planned Parenthood, uh, what you mean by an abortion mill? I'm, I'm not allowed to say that, but yes, that is an example oh, of an abortion. Okay. But I'm not permitted to say that that specifically was what I did. Um, so we do these things for certain people. Now, um, a few years ago, like maybe two years ago, I worked with three exorcists. Um, I can give their names if you want them. Yeah, why not? Um, um, Father Gary Thomas, Monsignor Rossetti, and Father David Lees. And these three exorcists worked with me to break all 146 blood ties that I did. And I couldn't remember who they were all with. And Father Gary Thomas did a lot of deliverance prayers for me. And I worked with a woman named Jacinta Cox. And we were able through the deliverance prayers to remember all 146 that I did. So we broke all of them with exorcism prayers. And then the result of that was that a lot of the businesses that I did them for, their revenue dropped by billions of dollars. Like I did one for a coffee company that used to be worth like $250 billion. And now they're worth like $107 billion. And I did one for a fast food company that had over $200 billion. And now they're worth just over $100 billion. And I did one for a, um, a theme park. And they did it, I did it for them twice. And, you know, there's so many of those in fast food restaurants and coffee shops that I'm not naming anybody specifically, but you can figure it out. Um, you know, and I did two for them and their numbers, their billions of dollars dropped as well. You know, and it's like we, we broke the blood tie sacrifice. That we did. Like I said, I did 146, so it was quite a few. And um, it was very exciting getting to do that. Yeah, I mean, if you talk about com coffee companies, and I don't know if you've done much, re much research, and I'm not saying this is the one that you did a blood tie with, uh, an exorcist blood tie to cut that. But I look at Starbucks and their logo and this Lilith. Have you ever <laughs> looked into that by, by chance? I haven't looked into it, but Lilith is a demon. She's mentioned in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, Do you the, the right? concert. Do you remember the concert tour that went around called Lilith Fair? Yeah. <laughs> they, they named yeah. a tour for Demon. Unbelievable. So for and those no of you one, who drink, go ahead. No one thinks anything of that. I didn't no until you said that. I didn't think of it either until right now. That's why I'm like, oh my gosh, duh. But I didn't. You know, you don't know what you don't know. And when right. I saw the the Lilith Starbucks logo, you got to dig. People get out of Google. I mean, it is, you're going to have to look at page 56 in order to get something. Um, try other brave, DuckDuckGo ain't that great anymore. And I know ain't ain't a word. But anyway, back to Lilith. The old logos. I mean, she has breasts and her right. legs are mermaids and it is i mean it is truly evil so, i've heard if you look at that logo up close that the fins behind her are not fins it's her feet uh, her I've, legs are red, have to look at that. and that's her feet I, I don't know i'm blind i can't look at the logo yeah uh, <laughs> you're right it's yes, and the old one is even worse. But yeah, there are breasts. They used to have breasts sitting on the logo. Like uh, again, just amazing how it is everywhere. And I just want people to just be aware and 
like you said, stay close to the sacraments. If you are not a Catholic, look into the faith and protect yourself with all of the beautiful sacramentals and the prayers and the power of exorcist priests, the power of regular priests through Jesus, right? It's all Jesus that is giving any of us power. Your testimony is all because of Jesus and obviously Mary. And that's the my, double way. My friend Tommy said that after the airplanes hit the Twin Towers, that Starbucks had a coffee cup that came out that showed a, I think it was a dragonfly heading towards two things. And it looked just like an airplane heading towards the Twin Towers. And that, that lasted, he goes, it lasted a couple of weeks. And then they got rid of them. Wow. Yeah. And he was in New York when that happened. Uh, I did, we could go right down that rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, it it's just it insane. We'll stop right there. Yeah. And, and also, I know that, and maybe we could do this another time. We don't have to do it right away. But I think that, they're, that they want, they have to, they have to show us it's free will. You know, like, you know, the symbols and I'm throwing my hand up like an OK sign with a 666, you know, the one eye, like there's all these symbols and things, the devil horns. I mean, you know, you just which you probably didn't see because you have sight issues. But just during Super Bowl, they had, I don't know, Ice Spice or whatever the heck her name is, Flash and Devil Horns. She waited until the camera came on her. Right. She was with uh, Taylor Swift, Satan Swift, in my opinion. I mean, and again, she was wearing an upside down cross. I mean, they show us, but if you don't have eyes to see, then you're literally not. It's just like and, the little fair that you just smack right. the upside the head with right now, you know? And then there's people that are like, oh, they just do that for effect. Like, no, they, they you know, it, it doesn't matter really, even if they did do it for effect. It doesn't matter if they believe in Satan or not. Satan believes in them, and he's taking all that seriously. Look, God, they're paying homage to me. Look, God, that's my crucifix. That's my cross. Look, they're worshiping me at 3 a.m. That's the devil's hour. Yep. 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 Exactly. Yep. And I'm so, so, I, we didn't. Get we just did all this, and we didn't talk about my salvation. You did a little bit. You had mentioned yeah, that did, right? it was Mary and she turned you around to Jesus, but you're right. I think we need to dive into that a little bit more because I'd like to ask you some questions about that. But sure. man, sure. it's late. Can we do another one? <laughs> sure. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. So we have to ask your wife when your next available time is, and I'm totally game. Honey? Yeah. <laughs> When's the next time I'm available? Um, not till Friday. I'm not available till Friday. Okay, Friday, Friday. I could do Friday. Want to do Friday, same, same time, same time, same channel? <laughs> I'm same bad channel. Yeah, I was going to say that. But then I was like, I don't know, is that is that a demonic thing? I'm, you know, I'm always no, like. Come on, it's Batman. <laughs> Right. I used half to have that. Do you remember, the, I don't know. Do you remember the, the old Protestant uh, WWJD? What would Jesus, what would do? Jesus do? Yeah. I used to have a bumper sticker on my car back when I could see, and it said WW, and then it had the Batman logo, D. What would Batman do? Because, <laughs> you know, Batman was upright and justice and honest. And honest to a fault, you know, he was willing to die, you know, even if, you know, he was willing to tell the truth, even if it cost his life. That was the Batman I grew up with. Yeah, you're right. Who was that that played that guy? Adam West. Ah, nice. Nice memory. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I just remember the weird, the weird, uh. There was actually Robin, and then there was all this like, "Oh, is he homosexual?" 
Right, they started making the costumes with nipples on them and stuff. It's like, what's wrong with you people? But there was a Batman series that came right. out in the 1940s. And I think it was called the Batman Serial. And Batman couldn't fight worth a darn. Robin couldn't fight. Alfred could fight better than Batman. And he was old. And if you like <laughs> old cars, you need to watch it because it shows the cars out on the street from the 1940s. But the show is very hard to find. And there's a lot of racist comments in it because the Japanese were the bad guys back then because of World War II. And there's comments yeah. about them that are derogatory. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I, I found it actually, I found it on Netflix on a DVD. I don't think they do DVDs anymore. But it was a very fun show, but you had to get past the, the racial comments they were making. I mean, they, they were horrible. But it, no. <laughs> it's a very fun show, though. You know, and you saw what TV was like in the 1940s. Yeah, no doubt. The stuff that you on television that, oh my gosh, you couldn't, you couldn't say that stuff now. Right. Well, that's also couldn't a little you, bit of a problem. Maybe not being that rude, but there's so much political correctness, which is, again, what they've trained us to do so we don't speak. You know, they trained us, don't speak about politics exactly what we need to speak about. You know? Right. I wasn't a like, fan just, uh, of Bill Maher. I wasn't a fan of Bill Maher, but I am a fan of his show, Politically Incorrect. Hmm. You know, and he would say stuff on there, you know, against the Democratic Party and be telling the truth. Yeah. And yeah. He, he was brave enough to say it. Unfortunately, yeah, he would also. What I think about that guy. <laughs> right. Well, I'll like I said, I'm not a. And I think he's an okay. atheist. So I think he's yeah, an atheist. yeah, it could be, could be just just he's stuff that I've understood. Maybe who he, who his dad is, and all that kind of stuff. You know, again, some conspiracy theory stuff. We'll we'll have to take that off this uh, <laughs> this video. All right. So next time, Friday, we talk about your conversion, and then we reiterate some of these things that we can do and things that we can seek out with our family and friends, because we kind of dove into that. But, you know, what is really happening with some of our family members when they, you know, act the way that they act or right. are addicted, you know, and you may just think, oh, well, it's just my teenager or it's just my 20 year old or it's just my 30 year old. And for me, it was up to 42 years old. And I didn't realize how many demons I really did let into my life. And maybe that's another thing of what we need to be aware of that can open up the doors and the windows for all of those demons to come in and torture us. And, 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 that, and that there are ways to shut the doors and the windows. Yes. I mean, it's, not, it's not a hopeless situation. You know, there is hope. There is salvation. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's not always a train. <laughs> I love it. That is so true. It is. It is Jesus always in the Catholic Church and confession and deliverance prayers. And that's another thing I want to get, you know talking about because they have been a game changer, you know, so we can deliver ourselves. We own our bodies. And in the name of Jesus, we can do a lot of things. Um, but we, we kind of scratched that surface a little bit. So we'll touch base on that. But I think it's a beautiful way to end in the glory of God in your life and how everyone else can have that too. Right. All right. Okay, so I'm going to click end. <laughs> Remember when I sent you the email? I'm like, oh, no, do you still have the laptop open? I don't have a message. It seems like everything is locally recording. So I'm going to hit end. Check okay. your email or have your wife check your email in case I panic. But I think it's yeah. going to be okay because I, I got the regular recording. So, wow, dude, this was two hours and 45 minutes. You rock. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a very blessed night. And I will talk to you Friday. Okay. All right. God bless you all. Take care. Bye. Bye.